sorry, I had to cut off the video there. Um, I'm just going to continue on here. So <clears throat> into my calculator, I've saved my statistic. Um, so 535 over 625, which turns out to be 85.6%. And I'm going to add on plus my 1.96 bracket. <clears throat> I need to do the square root. Uh, sorry, square root of a bracket one minus nope one minus a all over six two five so it's my p hat plus or minus one point nine six I don't have p I have their version of it I don't, like I do want to trust them but I'm, I don't know um so p hat bracket one minus p hat all over six two five and then I should just be able to press equals and 88.35 is the upper end of my scale, 88.35%. So here's my little interval. Um, and the lower end of my interval would be if I'd subtracted it. Sorry. And that gives me... No, sorry. So so it's my that minus uh, one point nine six bracket square root of Sorry, 82.85. So my interval from, okay, it's not perfect. It is from a sample. You know, I'm, I'm doing it at a 95% level of confidence. So I'm not always going to be right. But from my sample, my interval is about this. And I'm 95% confident that the real answer, the real proportion of Ryanair flights lies within this interval. Now, I'm going to write that a little bit more matsy. There's my maths done. And from my maths, I don't believe... I just, I, I reject what they're saying. But I have to be clear, my conclusion. I have to explain the maths that I did. So, <clears throat> at... A 95% level of confidence. I reject the claim that 93% of Ryanair flights arrive on time. So, <clears throat> you know, just be as clear as you can in your conclusion. I reject the null hypothesis. I'll back up here. The null hypothesis happens to be the same as their claim. So I'm rejecting their claim. Um, something else is happening because my interval is between 82 and 88% and they're saying 93%. So... Uh, from the, the statistics that I've done, from the sample that I've taken, I'm rejecting their claim. So I hope I've explained that as clearly as possible. What I would then do is, <clears throat> obviously if you free, feel free to ask questions, but I would probably look at this example. So it's example 5.11 in your log table, or in your book. And I might be able to read it all there. Don't look at the solution, obviously. But you can, you know, look, look there, um, see if you, you know, take your time 
especially with the first few. Um, see about the claim that they've made. Don't assume that the claim is your null hypothesis. So it probably is, you know, I'm starting off with the nicest ones that I can find, as straightforward as possible. So look at your null hypothesis, look at your um, alternative hypothesis, so your HO and your H1, really dissect the, the information that's going on here. Um, your null hypothesis has to have um, just one statistic in it. So it looks like in this situation, it's thought that 30% of a certain kind of apple seed will germinate. Well, that sounds like their claim. So, is that a 1% that, that has been nailed down? Yes, it is, it's 30%. So that does sound like my HO and the claim are actually the same in this situation again. Then go through your maths, and then you can have a look at whether you reject their claim or whether you fail to reject their claim. Um, I might do another couple of videos here. I'm gonna wait until, you know, a good hour to see what your questions are. Um, if I need to then, I'll put up another video and I'll send you out an email later today as well. Um, just send me on your questions in an email and I'll just kind of gather it all together and maybe later in the day, send out a, another video um, to do with hypothesis testing of categorical data here and yeah i'm going to maybe just throw up another couple of videos but some of the data that we'll do a hypothesis te hypothesis test on will be on numerical data maybe and we might use a z score in that situation rather than a confidence interval because i have options